Hello and welcome, it's Jennifer. I'm very glad you're here and I am very happy to be doing another video on the Spellbinder's newest tool called Better Press. Now, Better Press is a tool that you use with your die cut machine to create the look of letterpress and it is effortless and gives incredible results. Now, I have done a very complete thorough video on the opening of this box and some ways to use it in a previous video. I will link to that video here at the top right, in my description below, and at the end of this video. I encourage you to watch that first. In that video, I give you the basics. Today, we're just going to do more things with that Better Press system and also uh, combine it with other products such as die cutting and stamping. You will notice that I'm very excited about this tool because I know that it has so much to offer and there'll be a lot more coming out in the future but I know new tools aren't for everyone. So if you are interested in getting a letterpress look using basic dies and a die cut machine, I will link to a video I've done at the end of this video and up here on the top right if you want to check that out. But I am excited about this new tool, the possibilities it has, and all that they have coming out in the future. So let's get started. I did a complete unboxing of this Better Press tool in my last video. Again, be sure to check that out. It has a lot of information. This is just a little bit of the footage just so I can review it. This is what comes in the Better Press system. It comes with this, the tool itself, which is the Chase and the Platin. I'll talk more about that. It comes with a set of plates. It comes with an ink pad. It comes with some of the special cardstock and some tape. So everything you need to get started, all you need with it is a die cut machine. I will be using it with my Spellbinders die cut machine. It's the Platinum. However, you can check their website to see if your machine is compatible with this. Now this tool allows you to get the look of letterpress, which is where you have a really beautiful paper and an image is pressed into it, leaving ink behind, and it has great detail to it. I wish you could see and feel the texture in the video, but you gotta just trust me, it's gorgeous. Now the basic tool here itself is the chase, which is the part with the handle, and that clear plate is the platen. Now there are three shims underneath that gray magnetic grid in the chase. Those you just want to leave in there for now. In the future, they'll have thicker paper available, so you'll have to remove those shims. But for now, the shims stay in place underneath that gray grid, which is magnetic, and you'll see that in a moment. Now, the platen, that clear piece, snaps on top thanks to magnets, making sure you line it up great every time. Now, I will also be using Spellbinder's Best Ever Craft Tapes. That roll that you see there comes with the Better Press system. I just put mine into a little tape dispenser to make it easier to use. As for cardstock, you can use different cardstocks, but I do recommend the cardstock that they found works best for this. It's a cotton paper, so it really takes the impression well. It's available in white, cream, and gray, and in full-size sheets, A7 and A2. The Better Press tool itself comes with a pack of A2 sample colors, so all three colors are included. As for inks, Spellbinders worked with Ranger to formulate the perfect ink for the Better Press system. Now, the black one comes in the Better Press box, so you can create right away, but there are other colors available, and you can see the color swatches here, and I do know they're coming out with many more of these inks in the future. However, in my last video, I showed lots of examples of using other inks, and I will use some of those in this video today, too. I will talk more about different inks as we go and talk more in detail about the system as we go. All right, let's get started by using the Better Press. And I thought I would use it to make a bunch of sentiments all at once. You know me, I love to have a bunch of sentiments on hand, and this is a great tool for that. This will also demonstrate how easy this is to use, and then we'll get into other techniques. Okay, so I'm taking the clear platen, that top portion there, and I'm flipping it over. I'll be able to tell it's flipped over because the better press word on the bottom will be reading backwards. Now onto this, I am taping some of the better press cardstock. This is the white or porcelain color. I just took a letter size sheet of it and cut it in half so I can do lots of sentiments at once. I'm using little pieces of that best ever craft tape that comes with the Better Press tool to tape it on there. You could use whatever tapes you want, but it comes with it. 
First up, I'll be using the Spellbinders Better Press Plates called Always and Forever Sentiments. Now you've got the Better Press Plate, which is that silver one there, and it comes with the coordinating die to cut them out after you've done the Better Press process. So I will take this plate and put it onto the gray grid portion of the chase. Now that is very magnetic, so you don't have to worry about it shifting, which is very helpful. I'll also be using the Spellbinders A Little Message Sentiments Better Press Plates. That's all of these little sentiments here. And I'm placing them so there's a little bit of space between them. I'm not worried about making sure they're straight or anything, no need. We'll use the coordinating dies that come with them to cut them out after. This time I'll be using the black better press ink that comes with the better press tool. Now inking it up is kind of similar to how you would ink up a stamp. You just want to kind of tap it on the raised surface of the better press plates. Now this ink has like a very firm pad so it's very easy to kind of stay on the surface. What they recommend doing at Spellbinders is kind of a pounce and pivot. So you'll notice I'm tapping the ink on or pouncing it on, and I do a little bit of a pivot when I do that, just to make sure I get good application. It's not hard to do, and you can see the shine of the ink on the plates themselves, so you know you have good coverage. Now you'll notice I did get ink on the chase itself. We'll clean that up later. All right, so now I'll take the platen and put it on so that the paper is facing down. But what happens here, I'll pause it, is the platen sits on top of the chase on those four little magnets in the corners. So you just pop it on. And the magnets leave a gap. So the paper isn't touching the plates until it goes through our machine. So now I'll just pick it up, feed it through the machine, very easy to do, and that will press the paper onto the plates, which will give an impression and leave ink behind. I will say it goes through the machine easier than I think like the die cutting process does. It's very smooth. All right, now check this out. Look how beautiful each of those transferred. Very detailed sentiments, great ink tr transfer, and it's got that impression that is so beautiful. All right, so now I've done one, I can go ahead and do the same process again and create a bunch of sentiments at once. I do like these two sentiment sets because a lot of your occasions are covered, so you'll have something for pretty much any theme card you need to do. So as I do some more of these sentiments, I wanted to mention, I know there are a lot of crafty tools on the market and a lot of them, most of them I think have a little bit of a learning curve. You gotta practice them, such as foiling or gel press or other things. The thing I really was impressed about with this system is that it's effortless. Like your first pass through, which I did in my other video, is great, gives great results. So I feel like there isn't a learning curve with this. The only learning curve with it is coming up with all the ways you can incorporate it into your everyday card making. So it really is a great tool if you want to try something new that won't be very intimidating. So just something to mention, and I think that's one of the reasons I'm very excited about it. All right, now to clean up the uh, chase here, I do recommend cleaning it up as soon as you can instead of letting the ink kind of dry on there. I use the Ranger Archival Ink Cleaner. That's what Spellbinders recommends, and I dab some of it onto a dry cloth and then rub it onto that gray platform there. Some of it might stain a little bit, but that doesn't really bother me. You can see that you uh, definitely can keep using that with no problem. As for cleaning the plates, I don't clean them unless I'm switching colors. You may have to clean them maybe after 10 uses if the ink is building up on it, but I didn't notice it and I haven't had any problems. So I only clean when I have to. All right, so here I'm just doing the sentiment strip portion. This time I'm using the gray color. I think it's called Pebble. It's a light gray that is beautiful. So now that I've got one set of these sentiments, I'll ink up the plate again. And instead of putting the platen on as I did before with the word better press on the bottom, so this is how it was before, I'm gonna rotate it. So watch, I'll rotate it 180 degrees, pop it on to the magnets, and then run it through. And this will give me a second set of the sentiments on the other side of the paper. This is great if you wanna do a mirroring technique also, which I showed in the previous video. But here I'm just going for lots of sentiments. Look at how detailed that is. I wish you could touch it and see and feel that impression that it gives. Hoping it picks up a little bit in the video, but it really is beautiful in real life. And I look forward to the heavier cardstock that'll give a deeper impression that Spellbinders will be coming out with in the future. Again, you can use other cardstocks, but this 100% cotton paper is definitely best for this process. 
All right, so now I'm using the coordinating die to cut these out. Don't worry that th those uh, sentiments are really pressed into the paper so it won't flatten. You'll still have the texture even after doing the die cutting process on top. So I ran that through like a regular die and check this out. Lined up great. I mean, we have exact alignment here, beautiful sentiments. If you don't like the little V flag on the ends, you can just chop them off, which I'll demonstrate later. But there's a closer look at that fine detail. Crazy about this. And I have the sentiments I created first. Here I'm lining up each of those uh, coordinating dies with the sentiments. Some of them I had too close to my sentiment strips. That's okay, I will learn that for next time to do more spacing. Run that through my die cut machine. And now I have the container full of sentiments in the white cardstock and the light gray that will be ready to go next time I want to make cards. All right, now that we have some sentiments ready and we've gone through the process, let's create a card. This first one shows how to incorporate a better press background and sentiments along with other products you may have, such as die cuts. So don't think that because this is a letterpress look that it has to have be like a simple one layer card with the focus on the better press results. You can incorporate these with all of the other things you like to use in crafting, such as stencils, inking, stamps, die cutting, and more. I showed some ideas in the last video, sharing more today. Now that we've done the sentiments, let's do the background and the flower die cuts. This is the Spellbinders Butterfly Garden Better Press Plate and Die Set, so you get the Better Press Plates, which are the silver, and the coordinating dies to cut out different portions. Now here is an example in their catalog, it's on their website too, showing the look you can get using these plates and dies. However, I'm going to give it a different look by using it with a separate die set. So the die set I'm using, the, the gold dies there, those are the Spellbinders binders in the bloom die set. They create big, beautiful, bold flowers, perfect for the center of this card. Now I did the die cutting with these dies off screen and here I'm just assembling them. They're very easy to layer. You just glue the layers together and I created some flowers in peach and in pink and some leaves in green and I did like a gold cardstock for the center of the flowers. Very easy to assemble and Spellbinders always has examples on their packaging and on the website. Now for this example, I chose to use these large die cuts, but you could do the same card design using large stamped images, large die cut shapes, anything you want. Now let's do the better press background. I have cut a piece of the white better press cardstock to be the same size as the better press plate that I showed you before. I'm rolling up pieces of the best ever craft tape and putting it on the back of my cardstock. This is a different way of attaching your cardstock to the clear platen. So I'm laying this down onto the better press plate. There's no ink on the plate. Now I'm putting the platen on top and I'll press it down. When I press it down, it grabs hold of that rolled tape. And now I know my cardstock is positioned in the same spot as that background plate. And when we do this, we will have the entire piece of cardstock covered with the better press. I didn't put the tape on the edges because I don't want to interfere with the better press that's covering the entire piece of cardstock. I just wanted to demonstrate another way of placing your paper into the system. All right, so I have inked up the entire plate. I will just take the plat and put it on top. It pops in place easily at those magnets. And then we just run it through the machine. Make sure you don't push that plat and plate down. Let the machine do it. You simply feed it through and I have never had it kind of shift. It stays put on its own. After I run it through, check out these gorgeous results. Smooth right up to the edge. And you could color this or ink it, whatever you want, but I'm going to leave it black and white. That way I can put these soft florals on the front of it and we get a really fun, bold look. So I have my little flowers here and I just assembled them off screen onto that panel to cover up that opening in the center. I just wanted to demonstrate that you could take some of these plates that are available and give them a different look. I chose to use three of the better press sentiments I created earlier on this card, and I'm cutting off the little flag on the end. I just wanted the clean edges for this particular design. I also like to take the black better press ink pad, which is very firm, and rub it right along the edges of the cardstock. Now this gives a very fine line of black, which matches the fine detailed sentiment, and it just makes it stand out a little bit better on our background of this card. 
You could also use a black marker to do this. You could use a gold marker to do this, but I feel like that firm black pad works really well. After I've done that on all three sentiments, I'm putting glue on the back and then putting a cardstock strip, and I'll end up putting two cardstock strips on the back. This will just build up some dimension so it stands up on our card, and it also makes it nice and strong. You could totally skip this or use foam tape if you prefer. Next, I will glue all three of these sentiments onto the card. I'll put the biggest sentiment, the longest one, right at the center, and I'll use my T-roller to make sure that I have it straight. Then I will put one of the other sentiments above it and another below it. I'm using liquid adhesive to do this so that I can wiggle it to get it just in the right position before I leave it to dry. Once they're both all three in place, I will put something heavy on it, give it a few minutes, and then we can add this to a card base. I chose to use a black card base. Now this card base is about four and a half by five and three quarter inches tall. A Little bit bigger than an A2, but I wanted more of that background to show and the plate was big enough to do so. So that's a black note card and I put a white cardstock insert on the inside to write my personal message. I also added some little gold glitter confettis for a bit of sparkle. So there you can see how elegant that detailed better press background is with the bold color on the front of it. So this shows you, you can take this better press look and just use it as it, one of the elements on your card. It doesn't have to be the focal point if you don't want to. And I love the look of that black and white. Okay, let's do a pair of examples here. The first one I'll do entirely with the better press. Then I will do the same card design, almost same card design, but using the better press plates for foiling. This is a great way to get more from your better press products. And I have an important inking tip. All right, so let's first do the better press process. I am taping an A2 card panel onto the back side of the platen. And then I will take the Spellbinders Big Thanks better press plate and put it right in the center of the grid lines. I know if I center it inside of those black A2 grid lines that it will line up with my cardstock. Now here I'm inking it up with the black better press ink, but I am intentionally not inking it up very well. It's hard to see in the video, but I don't have great coverage. I want to demonstrate something. I pop the platen on top of the chase, run it through the die cut machine, and it presses that platen down onto the plate, making that deep impression and the beautiful ink transfer. Now remember, I didn't ink up my plates well. So you'll see that it's not solid black. It's almost kind of gray. It still looks great, but I wanted to demonstrate that you can do the process again to make it darker. So if you happen to not ink up your plate well, no worries. I just inked up the plate, leaving it where it was, leaving the paper on the platen, pop the platen on top of the chase, run it through again, and because of those magnets, it will press that ink in the exact same place, giving you a super dark results. So really, when I say this is foolproof, it really is. The only way you could kind of um, not get great results is if you don't ink up your plate well. But if you don't ink up your plate well, just repeat the process and look at that. Gorgeous results. So it really is a system that is good for anyone wanting to try something new, but don't wanna put a lot of effort into the learning process. All right, now I have the Spellbinders Butterfly Swirl Better Press Plates and Coordinating Dies. It also includes a sentiment, but I'm just using the butterfly. I have the scrap of the Better Press paper. I'm rolling up some tape to put on the back. I'll lay my paper over the plate. Then I'll put my platen on top, lining up the magnets. I'll press it down to grab a hold of that tape. And now I know that my cardstock is lined up with the plate. While I do this with the Better Press Black ink, I wanted to mention you can definitely use other inks. I will do so later in this video, but I do recommend ink pads that have a firm felt pad, such as Altenew, uh, Gina K Designs, uh, Hero Arts. Something with the firm pad is helpful because it keeps the ink just on the raised areas. But if you want to make sure you get great results every time, definitely try the Better Press inks. All right, so there we have our butterflies. Now I will use the coordinating die along with my die cut machine to cut them out. This is fun because these little butterflies can be used on as accents on any card. In fact, I think I might add one of these butterflies to that floral card that I just completed. And check out that detail. 
All right, now I put this card together off screen just to save some time. I used a black note card that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches, and I trimmed the white panel down just a little bit to go on front. I also added three butterflies that I colored with some basic markers, which I'll show you later in this video, and added some gold gemstones. Look at how solid black that thanks is. It has an impression to it, great transfer, lots of detail. And those little butterflies I added with a bit of dimension just to give this simple card design a little bit of something extra. You could also use that bold thanks there and add little die cuts around it, little stamped images. You could stamp over this. You could do like a watercolor inky background over it. Sky's the limit. I will do a video soon where I show some inky techniques you can use along with the better press. Next, let's use the same better press plates to do foiling. So yes, you can use your better press plates on your foil machine. I have my Spellbinders Glimmer Machine here warm and ready. I put my better press plate onto it, some foil face down on that, and then a piece of smooth white cardstock on top of that. We'll add our two shims that come with the Glimmer Machine. Press the timer button, and when the timer button stops flashing, I will take all of those plates out and run it through my Spellbinders Platinum Machine. If you would like to see the foil process in more detail, I'll link to a video up here on the top right. So after I've run this through, you'll notice I get beautiful foil results. I have found that I think these better press plates actually foil even better than regular foil plates. I don't know, something about the detail these plates have give amazing results. I haven't had any trouble with the foiling process with them at all. Now I can use the coordinating die to cut them out and we have little foiled butterflies instead of the black better press butterflies we did before. Just a great way to use your products in different ways to get more value from them. All right, now I'm using that Thanks Better Press plate along with foil, smooth white cardstock on the Glimmer machine. I'll take that out, run it through my machine and look at, I get solid foiling. It makes me happy when I can use one product in multiple ways. Now this is really important to mention. You can use your better press plates to do foiling, but you cannot use your foiling plates to do better press. That might damage your better press system. Now let's do the background. I'm using a better press plate set to do the foiling. So this is the So Grateful For You. It comes with what you see here, but I'm just using the background. I did the foiling as I just showed you, but I did it off screen this time. And look at these results. Look at that fine detail foiling. And I love how it just really kind of sparkles as you tilt it in the light. Absolutely gorgeous. I glued that onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. And now I'm adding my assembled thanks at the center. That is matted on gold cardstock. Now I did the thanks with the butterflies just as I did before. I use basic markers to color in. You can color over foiling. So I have a similar design, but this time I have the foil background and lots of shine. So this demonstrates that you can use your better press plates on your foil machines. And again, I find that it is even more effortless to do foiling with the better press plates than foiling plates. And here are the two cards together, two different looks using the same products. Okay, my last card is using all better press products, showing you how you can mix and match them, add color and more. So I'll do the better press of this diamond plate here. You've seen me do it a few times. So while I'm doing it, I thought I would mention, I, people have been asking, like, is this a one-time thing where um, Spellbinders comes out with this tool and just these products? No, I absolutely know they have a lot more planned. And I do see that it will be another tool in our craft room, just like foiling, die cutting, stenciling, and more. So I, there's a lot that is coming, and I'm really excited about that. So there you can see the beautiful results here. I did it first on white cardstock, but I switched to the pebble, the light gray better press cardstock, and that's what you see here. I thought it'd be fun to do coloring on that light gray. I normally don't do a lot of coloring in my videos. It's not something I'm good at or really enjoy. I get stressed out doing it, but I wanted to mention, because I know people wonder, how do you color in these images if that's what you choose to do? I recommend using your basic markers, water-based markers, watercolor, colored pencils. You can use your inks and water, whatever you prefer. The only thing that I don't recommend is using your alcohol markers like Copics. I do think that the Better Press ink might bleed with that, but if you're careful, you could probably get away with it. 
Here I'm just doing some basic coloring, uh, showing that with these detailed images, you can color them in if that's what you like to do. Now I did in my other video water coloring over these images and I liked that the impression of the plates, the outlines, actually are dipped down, right? So it kind of helps you to stay in the lines better when doing water coloring, which I can use all the help I can get. But here I'm just using some markers and doing a little bit of blending by doing tip to tip with the markers. But again, this isn't my area of expertise. I just wanted to demonstrate that you can color these in. After doing my coloring, I'm using the Spellbinders diamond die set to cut that diamond shape out. You could definitely just use a trimmer if you prefer, but I really like these diamond dies. It's a nice alternative to just doing a rectangle at the center of your cards. All right, so I matted that with black cardstock, and then I cut three white di uh, diamonds from a slightly smaller diamond die. This, these are actually scrap cardstock pieces. Instead of using foam tape, I prefer to use scrap cardstock so it doesn't go to waste and we can get nice strong dimension that won't get messed up when it goes through the mail. No one will ever know that you use your messed up pieces of cardstock to add that dimension. All right, now let's do the background. If you look closely on the background, there is a, the Better Press done with a light pink ink. So I'll talk a little bit about other inks you can use. So I have a background plate from Spellbinders. This is a Better Press plate called Floral View. And it actually comes with a sentiment also. I'll show it up here on the screen. It comes with that sentiment, Better Press plate, and that die. Now I have a piece of the uh, Better Press cardstock in white that I have cut to the same size as my plate. It's a little bit bigger than A2. So I'm rolling up pieces of tape to put on the back of that cardstock. I'll lay it down onto my plate, lining it up, and then I will put the platen on top. I'll line up the magnets on the platen and then press down, which will grab that rolled tape and attach the cardstock to the platen. And it's nice and positioned and I will get a better press background that goes right up to the edges. Now this time, instead of using better press ink, I'm using Altenew Fresh Dye Ink. I found this ink works really well because it is a slightly more viscous dye ink, which means it's a little bit thicker, and it has a firm felt pad. But any dye inks with a firm felt pad should work well for this, such as Altenew's Fresh Dye, um, Altenew's Crisp Dye Ink, uh, Hero Arts, Gina K, and others. So I inked that up with the blush color, ran it through, and look at that beautiful result. It really presses in, and by using this lighter color, I think you can see the dimension a bit more. Absolutely gorgeous. Another idea is you can do the better press process without using ink, and it'll just give you the texture alone. I demonstrated that in my first video, so be sure to check that out. I added that diamond that we created to the center of this background and added all of that onto a light gray note card that I made slightly bigger than my background. So this is about four and a half by five and three quarter inches. I'll just put these slightly bigger cards in a five by seven envelope. I like having the freedom to make a slightly bigger card if it works best for my particular design. And I felt it did with this diamond. So here is a look at the completed card. This was done with all better press. I just mixed different plates together. I did add some white pearls for a bit of shine. You can see the beautiful better press on the background and also for those detail lines that we added the coloring to. So I hope this video demonstrates that you can use the better press products alone or use them with other products you have. But keep in mind, this kind of letterpress look really works well for a simple card with just a simple better press image. So you could always keep it at that too if you prefer. I do promise to do more videos on this tool because I like it that much and it's so easy to use. And I know they have more things to use with it coming out in the future. I will have links to all of these supplies in my description below. And yes, the Better Press system is now available in shipping, so that's linked below. I'm really excited about it and hope that you find this inspiring. I will link at the end here to my first Better Press video and a video where I show how to do a letterpress look with die, just regular dies if you aren't looking for another tool. I thank you for spending this time with me and I'll see you again soon.